Hi everyone, it's Mickey from Hike and RV. Now Gordon's taking a little break from this video, but don't worry, he will be back in the next one. And Finch, our cat, is doing really well. So recently, one of our viewers, Karen, requested that we do a video on the new Parks Canada reservation system, and that's for the National Parks of Canada. And we thought it was a great idea. So I actually went in yesterday to the site. I tried setting up a new account and also tried to book a site. So I wanted to share that whole procedure with you here in this video. I did add a few chapters to this video in case you wanted to skip ahead. In the first part, I actually review some of the reservation launch dates for a few of the popular parks in BC and Alberta. And in the second part, I set up a new account. And in the third part, I actually go in and try to book a camping spot. So let's get started. Okay, so this is the first time for me for the new Parks Canada reservation system. I've used the old system before but I'm going to go step by step and show you how I set up my account and then we'll try making a reservation. So here we are on the Parks Canada website. It's parks.canada.ca and then I'm going to just go into make a reservation. So they're just explaining here that they've moved to a new reservation system on the new platform and each location has its own launch date between March 13 and April 13, 2023. So let's take a look first at uh, what the launch dates are for some of the different parks. Um, we'll just look at BC first. What we want to do is get to some of the camping. Glacier National Park, they do have a reservable campsite. Hermit Meadows is a backcountry campground, but Loop Brook is a front country campground, and they operate from June 30th to October 9th. Here's another BC National Park, Kootenai Park, and their launch date is Wednesday, March 29th, so next week for me. Mount Revelstoke National Park uh, has already launched on March 13th and they have one front country campground so that's Snow Forest, that's a new one. Pacific Rim National Park Reserve, that's a really popular one and I understand from some friends that tried booking on the first day of launch which was March 13th it was completely full which is pretty crazy because they actually went on the site first thing in the morning when it opened but apparently the dates that they wanted were fully booked. In Yoho National Park, one of our favorite parks, they launch on Wednesday, March 29th. And the Lake O'Hara Overnight Camping, that was uh, one of the ones we really enjoyed. It's tent camping only and you do have to take a shuttle service to get over there to the campground. Um, and they actually launch on Tuesday, March 28th. So lots of different dates for launching. And I just wanted to go back now to Alberta. Some of the popular national parks like Banff. Their launch is Thursday, March 23rd. It was yesterday for us. Reservable periods are from May 11th to October 1st for the main Tunnel Mountain one in Banff. And then there are some other ones here as well. The other one I wanted to take a look at was Jasper. Jasper has already launched as well, March 16th. And here are all the different campgrounds you can actually book. Okay, so we've taken a look at that and now let's try to set up a new account. So we're just gonna go to the reservation service online. You can also book by phone says that you have to continue with the GC key interact which I'm not sure what that means but let's try it
There's two sign-ins. One, you can sign in with your bank, and that's only for um, people in Canada, obviously. And the GC key is probably the one most people will want to use. And you can actually create one. Let's just go in here and see what GC key means. Okay, so um, if you have a GC key account, it lets you access all the online services of Government of Canada. And it includes a username and password that you choose. And you have to also create security questions. So I'm just going to go in here. So since I don't have a GC key, I'm going to sign up. Terms and conditions of use, I'll just say accept. And then creating your username. So we'll NRV. Oh, your username must be at least eight characters. Okay, now I have to create a password. All right. Okay. And we'll continue. Okay, recovery questions. Okay, so I'm going to skip this part for you, but I'm going to fill mine in. You obviously have to fill your own. So we'll continue here. So if you want to recover username and password, you have an option to recover via email. going to send you an email just to verify the ad email address. Okay, so here's the email. And I will type in the code. And there we go. We've uh, they've directed us to the reservations page, and so I will enter my email address. Oops, gmail.com. <laughs> Got that. Okay, now it's telling you to complete the account details. All of these I will fill out. I won't show you that, and you can do your own. I've completed my name and address, phone number also, and I have signed up for their email updates. And so I'm going to hit create account. Okay, and we have to check email again. A little bit of a painful process, but you only have to do this once. And then once you're set up, you're good to go. Okay, so I've gone to my email. Click on confirm account. Okay, just consenting to use of cookies. And here we go, start again. Okay, so it's taking me back to the main page for the reservation service and now I'm going to officially sign in with my GC key. Now I'm logged in. Now I can Finally, create a reservation. So let's create a reservation. All right, here we go. 
Now I think the actual reservation part should be fairly straightforward, but let's try it out and see what happens. Okay, so first of all we want to do front country camping because we have an RV. And we want to scan site, not a group one. So we will try... Let's try, just for fun, Pacific Rim, only because, and now I can't remember when operations start, but I assume it's probably around May. So let's try one of these dates in May, avoiding a long weekend. We like to arrive on a Sunday or a Monday usually. So let's try May 7 just for fun. Let's stay a couple of nights, leave on Tuesday. We've got two people. We have a van pickup. So there, and search. Okay, so this is the one in Tofino that we like, Greenpoint. So we're going to try that. And this is actually very similar to the BC Parks website. I wonder if they're using the same platform. So it looks like there's different colors. I'm not sure what they mean, but we'll go in there and see. Whoa, look at that. Okay, so it looks like the these colors. Now, I believe the green color is probably available Red is uh, booked, and it looks like purple is, whoops, has partial availability, which means they're not available for the, the two nights. So in order to find out for this site, the site calendar, we'll see why. Um, yeah, so it's only available on Sunday night here. And actually, this is probably a good way to check. Now look at that. Look at Pacific Rim. That's incredible. May, June, July. Completely booked for this site. In August. <laughs> so apparently I picked one date that was available. Let's try going back a month. No, it, uh, it doesn't start in April. So yeah, so that's... I. <laughs> coincidentally pick the one night that's available for this particular site. So let's try a different way. We'll try the calendar way. And this uh, will show you what's available for the whole campground. And as you can see, not very much. I don't see two dates consecutively for any of these sites. We'll try and further in May, same thing, June, one night. <laughs> okay, so not, oh, there we go. At the beginning of May, there's some availability. So that might be a good idea, maybe We'll try booking the 1st of May. So there seems to be uh, sites 11 to 17, 19, and 26. Yeah, so there's quite a few available on the 1st of May. So we'll go back to the map and just check which ones. We'll change the dates to May 1st, May 3rd. Search again, Greenpoint. Okay, so we've got some sites here. And some nice sites. Nothing along the, the water that way. But there are some sites along here. That's probably too close to the highway. Maybe number 88 might be a good location, although you're right next to the washroom and showers, so that might not be the best. Maybe number 26. OK, 
Okay, well, maybe we'll try number 26. Click on that. Okay, so site number 26. We're good for size, maximum capacity. Okay. So, so 34.50 a night. Okay, so let's um, pretend that we're going to book this site. So we'll go in and, and click reserve. So here's your key availability legend here. So available restrictions, not operating, partial. Yeah, so very similar to the BC Parks platform. And if you want some uh, information on the parks and the dates of operation, they're up here. Okay, so let's uh, let's go in as if we're going to reserve it. Okay, so it'll show you May 1st to May 3rd, site number 26, two nights. You can just click. That's what you have to do to book a site. Now, there's your fees for two nights, thirty-four fifty a night, and then you've also got to pay an eleven dollars and fifty cent reservation fee. So for two nights, the total cost in Canadian is eighty dollars and fifty cents. And then, if you need to go back and edit it, you can, or you can just delete it. You can, um, and then obviously you just go into checkout, fill in your credit card information, and you're set. And they'll send you an email confirmation. Okay, so since I'm not making any reservations at the moment, I am going to remove my reservation. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward. The hardest part was setting up this GC key for Government of Canada services. If you're from overseas, or from the United States, I don't know that you would be going through the Government of Canada services at all other than booking a campsite, but straightforward. So it was uh, pretty good. And it's very similar to BC Parks, so if you're familiar with BC Parks website for reserving campsites, it's very similar to that and very easy. Uh, make sure you set up your new account. Everyone has to have a new account in the, with this new system, so even if you had an old one, you still have to set up a new one. And then the other alternative, if you're Canadian, is just sign in through your bank. So that's handy as well. So we hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. And Gordon, Finch and I, we'll see you next time.